No, I'm just going to I'm going to do the same test that I do with every other module. I'm going to record the results and I'm going to publish the results and people can make up their own mind. I no, personally I, I don't like you as a person. I, I won't lie about that. But your products they stand on their own. I judge them like and when the product is really good, like Unify and Crossfire, I sing their praises all the time. Yeah, double-sided tape right here. Why? The TBS Fusion is the new FPV receiver module from Team Black Sheep, Brain FPV, and Achilles. And if you believe the user manual, it's the best receiver module you can put in your goggles today. But is it? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This video is going to break down into three parts. One part is the features and functions and user interface of the module. What's it like to have the module in your goggles on a day-to-day -day basis? One part is the RF performance of the module. How does it just stack up in its ability to bring in a signal? And yes, in that part of the video, we will have a rapid fire versus TBS fusion head to head. And the last part is going to pertain to the quality, the build quality of the module. And that is actually going to have to be the first part because there's a little bit of damage to my module and I got to get that out of the way before we get into the rest of this video. If you look at the screen on my goggles, you will see that some of the lines are missing on the screen. And the reason for this is that I have broken the lower left corner of the screen. You see it's kind of cracked here and there's a little bit broken off. And I'm telling you about this because I don't want you to make the same mistake I did. It happened when I was installing the cover to the module and I have, it, it's not my first rodeo guys. I removed and installed the cover as carefully as I freaking could. But the reason my screen broke is because of this little lip right here, which is supposed to go to the outside of the screen and hold the module cover in place securely against the screen. But the problem is that when you go to install the module cover, you can see that there's a fair amount of play here. And if the module cover is too far to the side, then when you press it down, well, it's a little difficult for you guys to see this, but when you press it down, that little lip presses on the screen and cracks it. That's my best guess as to what happened. So I guess watch out for that when you're installing your module cover. If we compare the TBS Fusion to something like this LaForge module, you can see the LaForge module comes with a metal cover to prevent the screen from taking damage. And this rapid fire module has no metal cover, but the screen is designed such that when the cover is installed, the cover is securely in place and there's no chance of the rapid fire screen getting damaged by the cover. So I hate to start the review on a down note, but if I did the whole review with my screen messed up, you guys would wonder why, and I need to tell you what's going on there. That does lead us, though, into a discussion of the overall fit and finish of the module. And as far as build quality goes, I am i don't know, but the cover certainly could be better designed. It is a very light plastic, very flexy, and when you first get it, a lot of people, including me, are having to actually file out you can see the file marks here to file out this part because when you first get it, the joystick can't click upwards because this case is in the way. The other thing that I'm hearing a lot of people mention is that when they get the module out of the box, the screen is floating loose and you have to get some double-sided tape. I use some VHB tape and reinstall it. Um, I'm sure that TBS has already addressed this with manufacturing and in the next batch of modules, this won't be an issue. But if you get a first module, that may be something that you experience and you'll need to take care of that. But frankly, I don't really hold any of this against the Fusion. I think it's completely normal that a first generation product would have a few little manufacturing oopsies. And I expect these will be very quickly uh, addressed. And I expect that anybody who is affected by them will be promptly taken care of by TBS's excellent customer support. So with that out of the way, let's get into the features and functions of the module. And the most basic thing a module can do is get you onto the channel that you want to get onto uh, so you can see your video and start flying. And the Fusion does that first through what they call matrix mode. And again, you notice that there are some lines missing from my screen and that's because of my cracked screen. So just that's not what it's going to look like when you get it.
In matrix mode, the channels and bands are represented as a matrix or gr a grid, and you can move up and down the channels by pressing left and right, and up and down the bands by pressing up and down. Now that's all well and good if you know what channel you want to be on, but what if you don't know what channel you want to be on? The next thing I want to show you is the band scanner. And in the band scanner, the goggle scans a certain band and shows you the signal strength of all the channels on that band. So what most of the time I'm going to be doing is putting it on race band and I can see very quickly that on race one, two, and four there are transmitters right now. Once band scan has showed you which channels are in use in a given band, then of course you want to jump onto one of those channels and unfortunately there's no way to do that directly from within the band scan screen. What you have to do is you have to hit the button then go out to the matrix and just select one of the channels. Now band scan is nice if you know, for example, that everybody in your areas on race band. But if you don't know what bands or channels they might be on, the tool that you might consider using is the multi-lock. And multi-lock scans all the channels and finds up to eight transmitters on the strongest channels that they're on. Now in my case, the transmitters are on race one, two, and four, or maybe one, three, and four. And this highlights an issue with this multi-lock function. You can see that it has discovered E3 and R1. Oh, it got one right. <laughs> this is not really a limitation of the uh, Fusion itself. It's a limitation of auto scan function in any of these modules. They just don't have enough sensitivity, enough resolution, I don't know what you want to call it. They aren't able to reliably lock on to the exact right channel. They often lock on to nearby channels. In fact, if we rescan multi-lock, we may not even find the exact same channels again that we found the last time. So now it's finding four channels that are strong enough and they are E3, B3, race one. Okay, got that one and race four. So now it got two out of the three correct, but it also got two incorrect ones. The final function that you can use if you don't know what channel you're looking for is the auto lock function. And this works kind of like the old FM scan on your car radio where you just push up and it scans up through the frequencies to find the next channel it locks in on. So here we can see it's locked in on B3, and if I press up, it just keeps going and it locks in on the next frequency it finds. And if we keep going, eventually we will, oh, there we go, race four, we did find the right ch uh, channel. But we're also gonna find a lot of sort of nearby adjacent ones that aren't exactly right. Nevertheless, I think this could be really useful if you are trying to find your quad. Like you just don't know at all what channel it's on and you're just like, just get me on the channel and then this'll, this'll probably find it. So that's how the TBS Fusion lets you select what channel you wanna get onto. And honestly, in my opinion, this is like the most important thing a module does. Being able to see what channels are in use and then get on one of those channels quickly and effectively, that's 99% of what you do with the module. But what else does this module bring to the table? One of the things it has is a quad finder function and the, hold on, I have to shut my, shut my quads up. One of the things it's got is the quad finder function and this function, oh wow. Cute. <laughs> All right, let's shut that up for a minute. What the quad finder function does is it lets you find your quad, like your quad has crashed in the tall grass, but the VTX is still powered on. The quad finder uses the, shush, shush, don't go back, stop it. <laughs> it uses the patch antenna. Uh, the patch antenna is presumably directional and it, it gives a audible and visible indication of signal strength. Another function that the Fusion has that is really freaking cool is a lap timer. This is a VTX based lap timer similar to like the Immersion RC Lap RF. And we first saw this implemented in the Achilles firmware and the developer of the Achilles firmware is working with TBS and Brain FPV on this. So it's great to see it here. There are various parameters you can set such as the RSSI threshold. You set this so that it knows when to trigger a new lap, the minimum lap time to prevent false triggers and the tune parameter, which controls how sensitive it is to triggering a new lap. This is a really cool little thing. Yeah, great for practicing by yourself, uh, just getting rough lap timing. It's not gonna be as sensitive or as accurate as like a professional lap timer, but considering you're getting it basically for free with the module, that's pretty freaking cool. 
The crossfire menu is pretty freaking cool. Now this doesn't do anything right now, but this goes back to the Wi-Fi setting that I told you about a minute ago. The module can connect to your crossfire module using Wi-Fi and then you can access the crossfire module menu from within the goggle. This is going to be especially useful to those who have a micro module that doesn't have a screen on it. If you're tired of using Lua scripts in your transmitter, this may be very exciting for you. You'll be able to go through all those menus using the module and the Wi-Fi. That is a function that is not implemented as of today, but is expected to be implemented at some point in the future. Now in a minute, we're going to look at the RF performance of the module and how it compares to the rapid fire. <laughs> but before we do that, I want to tell you some of the reasons you might think about getting this module, even if it doesn't win that shootout, because there is more to a module than the pure RF performance. Or is there? If what you care about is the pure RF performance and nothing else, you want the maximum penetration and the maximum range, then you need to look at the test I'm about to show you. And if you think the rapid fire won the test, then go for it. And if you think the Fusion won the test, then go for it. That's your decision made. But even if the Fusion doesn't win that test, features like the ability to interface with your Crossfire module, that doesn't just mean that you can access the menu easily. You can change the video transmitter settings easily. You can, they're, they're even talking about a feature where when you change the, the channel on your uh, fusion module, your VTX will automatically follow the fusion module around. So you just are always on the right channel. That's pretty freaking cool. And that level of integration is something that no other module has and no other module is going to have. If you're invested heavily in Crossfire, then it's certainly something to think about. If you're not invested in Crossfire or if you care the most about pure RF performance, then that may not be a deciding factor for you. And this test is in a high multipath environment. This is a giant metal pavilion. The video transmitters are at 25 milliwatts because I wanted to I wanted to stack the deck against the modules as much as possible. The higher output power would give more penetration and basically it might just look great for both of them all around. Using a 25 milliwatt output power, I feel like accentuates the differences between the modules since I wasn't able to fly off the parking lot. I couldn't get very much distance. So use low output power instead. In a second, I'll show the higher output power test on uh, a more typical environment, my house. The antennas in use are the Strix Hoot Omni and the Luminaire Axi patch. These were provided by ReadyMade RC and GetFPV, and thank you to them for providing the antennas for this testing. During this test, I want you to watch not only the static breakup, but also inside the building here, for example, the amount of flashing on the screen to see uh, how, how they're handling the multipath. How good is the sync reconstruction at preventing rolling, and how good is the frame combining at getting rid of those multipath flashes? I want to remind you, as I always do, that what you're seeing here is not a DVR. It's not a camera pointed at an external screen. It is a GoPro stuck into the eyepiece of the goggles, showing you the actual image on the screen of the goggles. And that is the only way to see what the goggle actually shows. Whenever you see somebody else doing tests using DVRs or external screens, you're not seeing what is actually in the goggles. All right, here is a more typical test. The quadcopter is at 600 milliwatt output power and we're flying not in a, like an ultra difficult high multipath environment, just flying around my house. Let's see how it does. And just try not to move it. That's the most important thing because then it's annoying to edit. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Bob, what are you at? 800? Good. Sad to, there we go. So I did the test in Chattanooga at 25. And people, some people were like, yeah, but what's it like at 800? So that was like the hard test. Now this is like the easy test. Yeah. Like everybody's going to look decent at 800 flying on my property. Yeah, this is how I do them all because I don't trust the, oh, nice. That was a nice move. Killing it, Bob. That was a nice move, dude. Now this is some Vic FPV right there. Oh. What happened? What happened? Oh, no video. Did you lose video? Yeah. See it. yeah, I saw it too. All right, well, you, you gonna fly? You gonna keep flying or are you down? And that brings us to the end of this review. And as always the question, 
Should you buy it? And I think that question goes back to what I said earlier. If what you want is the absolute best in RF performance, I think it's pretty clear that the rapid fire still wins. But many people don't want the absolute best in RF performance. They want a more reasonable price point. The Fusion is about $30 cheaper than the rapid fire as of today. They, you may want that integration with Crossfire, which is something that only the Fusion has, or you just may want to support the awesome people involved in this project like Brain FPV and Achilles. These guys are just genuinely good people who are doing genuinely good work in support of this hobby, and you certainly could just give them. Not that, not that Immersion RC isn't, damn it. Well, anyway. Despite the fact that the Fusion module has some areas to improve, specifically a few little quibbles in build quality and some things about the firmware that are a little annoying, the great thing is that these things will only get better over time and in the months from now, especially the user interface and features, which I know that the Achilles developer uh, is working mad. In fact, in the context of me making this video, he implemented a couple of pieces of feedback, but just like instantly. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I have to change the video now. <laughs> so the interface is only going to get better. The build quality will presumably get better. Some of you are going to say that firmware updates are also going to make the RF performance better. I I'm a little skeptical of that. At the end of the day, the fundamental physical sensitivity of the module is not going to be changed by firmware updates. It may get a little better, but developers are always promising to make their modules much better through firmware updates and I just don't think it usually happens. So there you go. I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's helped you decide if this is a module that you want to spend your money on. And if you have decided that, there are links down in the video description uh, and they are affiliate links and that's one way that I support myself by you guys clicking those links and making a purchase. You can make any purchase after you click one of those affiliate. You don't want to buy the Fusion module? Buy anything. Just click the affiliate link, make any purchase. I get a small commission and it does help me support myself, support the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you think I was fair. Some people heard I was going to review the Fusion and they were like, oh, here it goes. I don't have a beef with TBS's products. <laughs> Their products are pretty solid for what they are. And I would never let a personal interaction with, with a company owner affect my goal of review. I work for you guys, not for TBS. So if you want me to review the product, I'm going to give it a fair shake and hopefully give you guys the information you need to know. I hope you feel that I've done that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.